Thank you. My name is Talbot Black. I'm here testifying on behalf of Campaign for Liberty. I um, have followed these subcommittee hearings around the state, uh, missing only one, and uh, listened to many of, of uh, the concerns about this bill, and I'll address some of those. Um, but first I'd like to, to mention one thing. Uh, the Constitution is meant to protect the citizens' rights against encroachment from government. Um, and I have to say, when I was in Charleston, there was a, uh, a chief of police, I think it was the chief of police in North Charleston, who testified and expressed some concerns about this bill and uh, was worried about people carrying guns and he didn't know if they were good guys or bad guys. And, um, and I just ask you, Will you listen to the people whose rights you are to protect, or will you listen to the executive branch from whom you are to protect our rights from? Um, now, a couple of concerns. One was um, that reciprocity would be affected by this bill. It won't. Um, the concern is that if we no longer can get a concealed weapons permit, then we can't carry it in other states. The fact is, we still will be able to get a concealed weapons permit in South Carolina. We're not affecting the permit law. It's a shall issue law, so anyone who wants to get a permit will be allowed to, as the law, as the uh, amendment is written to the statute. Um, that's section 231215. We're not changing that section. So uh, a permit will still be available. What we're doing is making it no longer required. Uh, also, some of the um, Law enforcement have testified in the past that they are concerned about the language um, that it will be legal to carry a weapon as long as there is no intent to commit a crime, and concern about the necessary uh, the necessity to uh, discern the intent to commit a crime, uh, like that's new language. However, that is current language in South Carolina statute for every other weapon except for a handgun in 1623460C. Um, every other weapon, and they explicitly name several, including rifles, shotguns, knives, I think brass knuckles are included, um, that those are legal to carry as long as there is no intent to commit a crime. So that's not a new requirement to discern intent to commit a crime. That's current statute. All we'd be doing with this bill is bringing uh, handguns under that same requirement. <coughs> it really comes down to... Um, whether or not our government is going to trust our citizens or not. Do you trust us to be good law-abiding citizens, which we are, or are you going to treat us all like common criminals that we have to be fingerprinted, um, background checks run, and licensed before we're able to exercise our right, or we continue to violate that right under current statute? Um, Yeah, I mean, he's got a point of view about the reciprocity. I would like to take a question. Yeah, go ahead, Parker. Do you understand that the reciprocity state to state with the CWPs is based on the existence of the CWP laws as, as it is basically? Okay. I mean, you said that, right? Sure. Right. And generally speaking, it's up to the other states to decide whether or not they want to grant reciprocity to South Carolina. And generally, that's based on um, our permitting law right, and what it takes to get the permit. Yes, right. So now, if this law is passed, a person might be able to, a person who wants reciprocity will still have to have a CWP. That's correct, right. in my understanding. Right. Now, if they have a CWP, then they can't carry a gun to the ball game or to the courthouse or to the list of places that CWP folks cannot carry a gun. Right? If, if the law, if this this amendment statute is passed, my understanding is that it will include anyone who carries a handgun. We're not changing any of the law that states where a gun can be carried. Where are you reading that? We're not changing that, that part of it. You're saying the only thing that we're changing is in daycares and ball games and state parks and churches and hospitals and public buildings and jails, uh, polling places. That's correct. Anywhere that's currently specifically barred in statute, 
will continue to be barred under this statute. Now, I might not agree with that, and I'd love to see that changed in many cases, but under the current um, uh, bill that's being considered, we're not changing any of the specific language in South Carolina statute that where, bars. So where do you see that? It, well, it's not there. We're not changing the statute as it is, so it, it remains. Is, if you have a CWP, you can't carry this. But if you're operating without a CWP, the restriction on the places you can carry is only limited to those, those 187,000 people that have CWPs. The rest of the people who would be carrying pursuant to this bill would not have CWPs. Some would, some would. Some would have CWPs, and some would try and carry without CWPs, but the restrictions on the places only restrict CWP holders because what we're doing is we're striking down the general restriction. The amendment strikes down the general restriction that right now says you can't carry a gun except when you go fishing and a member of the National Guard and all those. There's no limitation on places in Title 16. Mr. Right, I, guess I may be able to help on this a little bit if I, if I may. Um, on 1623-420, that restricts um, the possession of firearms in public buildings and in public places. That statute will remain in place. So even though 1623-420, and that's not, I, I can't find in the proposed legislation where that's been repealed. So with that not being repealed, uh, it would remain illegal to carry, well, even though you might have open carry or have constitutional carry, you would, you would still be prohibited from carrying that firearm into a courthouse or to a, Oh, yeah. um, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to public property because it says public buildings. I believe my view of it is since it doesn't say public property that you could go onto a public park and carry. I, that's my my view at this at this time. So that may be something. I mean, that's a fair question to. Well, it is because to, I'm, what I'm trying to make sure what we're, we're undoing one thing. We're not setting up an artificial restriction that says if you want reciprocity, you gotta have a CWP. But if you have a CWP, you're more limited in where you can carry a gun than a guy without a CWP, because I think that's what it does. That's certainly not the intent, and it depends on the language, of course, the devil's in the details, <laughs> and, and, and we're certainly supporting making amendments to correct that. Right. Well, the, the 1623 is uh, publicly owned building, that's in Section A. Um, you've got 1623 which is school property. That's the, that's the carrying on, you know, on school grounds, which remains illegal. Um, you've all... Pick one that's not a hospital or a daycare. It's not 1623 because if you ought to have a CWP, you can't take a gun to the hospital. If you don't have a CWP, you can walk right to the emergency I, I, you could, you might be able to, unless it's restricted by another statute. You've also got the 1623-465 that still says it's illegal to carry it in a place that sells alcohol. So there's still some restrictions out there, whether it's CWP or whether it's um, open carry or constitutional carry, those restrictions remain in place because this bill doesn't um, in any way amend those sections. And I'm only yeah. to say that the, the list of restrictions are where you carry under CWP or the list of restrictions on where you can carry this bill passes are not enumerated except for the general broad category. And I think that we need to match up that list. Because I don't know if we've got all the different things I've been paying attention to. It's so much better to agree. It's kind of all over the code. 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 Because it's a public building, you say the other executive cover. But public property outside the door, maybe they can not. Okay. Any I more questions? Clear, no, I'm just because the reciprocity, I don't think <coughs> maybe some people do, but I know many GWPs are really concerned that they don't want us to undo reciprocity. Right, and we are not. Undoing reciprocity. That is not, not intending to undo reciprocity. Well, even even if what you're asking your question about is true, nothing will change for what you have to do to get reciprocity and what the current law is for those who have a CWP. That's the point. Now, what may happen is. And CWP people cannot carry to hospitals and emergency rooms and all those things. You can't all of a sudden say, well, I'm going to the hospital without my CWP. I understand, and if that's the case, that is certainly an unintended 
the consequence of the way this bill is constructed, and I would certainly support a friendly amendment to correct that. Um, and I think that's, I think I was at the end of my, my testimony anyway, so I will uh, sit down unless there's any more questions. Thank you. Appreciate it.